Okay. My name is Natalie. This is the test. Um, I have a daughter who's 15 years old. She has uh, intellectual disability. And I've been basically traveling or out of Australia for the last bit over a year. Um, trying to find or trying to come up with a concept or a vision, um, an idea for, you know, how do I want our lives to look in the future? Where do I want to live with her? Like, at the moment I, I mean, I realised the other day that, you know, if she had been a normal child, like, I probably would have stayed living in Karanda, which is near Cairns here. And, you know, she would have gone to the Steiner School. Uh, you know, we would have had a, you know, community or a group of friends around her, around us. But the way it's turned out with her having special needs is that I had to, you know, move away several times or moved to schools that were, you know, closer to the city so um, so she could access certain services, things like that, and um, funding. Um, so, yeah, she's actually, you know, missed out on living in a community environment and so have I. Like, we've actually, by the end of 2000 and Fifteen, like I was just feeling so isolated and like we were going down this road and it wasn't where I wanted to go, you know, when I look look forward to what's gonna be there for Freya when she finishes school, what's gonna happen to me, like, you know, when she was younger I was able to uh, study a bit, work a bit, there was family daycare sort of stuff so it was a little bit like having a normal kid I could still pursue my own interests to an extent um, even though you know she never went to friends houses like uh, actually the school she was in put her in different classes with different kids each year so she never really got to build up a group of friends I didn't feel to go into high school with so yeah I brushed my hair <laughs> There was nothing that I could see that I wanted my daughter to be able to move into when when school finished, and I couldn't see how how I was gonna cope or you know care for her without that support of like the school system, which basically is a program where she goes to day to day. I mean, there is some programs through local. Um, disability organisations um, but to me it's not being part of our community like it's still it's a stuffing a bunch of disabled people in a place and you know pretending to have fun or whatever and maybe they do have fun but to me it's like that's not where I want my daughter to live her life you know like what happens when I die I think that's the number one question in most parents who have a child with a disability. You know, like, she's just going to be looked after in those kinds of environments. And the thing that I really worry about in those kinds of environments is because it's all, like, disabled people, um, there's... This is going to sound really bad but <laughs> there's no accountability there's there's no like personal accountability that you would have say if you're working in like say in the council or an office or somewhere where there was normal able people um and you know i say that because you know because people are disabled it's like you know we think they're not 100 percent there 
they can't get us in trouble, you know, and I think just normal. So we don't, we, we're not 100% accountable. And a lot of the time in those environments or situations, there's no normal people, like, there's, there's not the normal accountability that you have of, like, um, other people seeing how you do your job, what you do. Um, from my experience of going into some, uh, like a residential care place was one, uh, where apparently the staff were stealing food out of the pantry, um, another story, but, um, yeah, like I, I walked in there, there was like two people with cerebral palsy, like disabled people at either ends of the table in the building there where I walked in. Um, one of them was going, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, like pointing on to something on the ground and obviously like walked in and said like, hello, hello, and like seeing what she was pointing to and picked it up for her and gave it back to her and then, you know, she was happy. Like, I don't know how long she'd been sitting there for and I'm like looking around, like, walk through another room and find three staff in the office. Blah, 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 blahing away about something their boss had said that morning or done or I don't know if it was an actual meeting or just staff discussion. But, um, yeah, it was like there's three staff in an office gas bagging and two disabled people out there and one, you know, with no supervision or, you know, this lady obviously had a need that those staff are being paid to meet and yet they're just talking away in the office. You know, if they were on a break, they shouldn't have all been on a break at the same time. Um, and, you know, this is the interesting thing. It's like you would, what I'm saying about accountability, like people think there's no one watching them. You know, like as soon as I went in there, there was suddenly like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> they didn't expect me. I didn't say I was coming. Um, and I was, yeah, I mean, I was watching like a, a, what do you call them, those online classes? And it was psychology, no, it was philosophy and, maybe it was just philosophy. Um, and this lecturer was saying about, like, you know, it's scientifically proven that, I don't know if this is science, but anyway, but if you have, like, a coffee machine, you know, like, your donation, tea and coffee, and it's just by donation, like, in the, I don't know where, if it was an office or wherever it was, um, if you just have, like, a normal picture or flowers or pretty pattern, something like that, above the coffee and tea, uh, people won't, won't be honest all the time, like, they won't, they won't, cough, like, they won't really be accountable and put in the donation, whereas if you have a painting of, like, a set of eyes, like, looking, um, there's something about it in our psychology that makes us the feeling of being watched or whatever it is that makes us more accountable and in those um, places where they had the eyes painted on the wall there was a huge like a really big difference in the amount of honest donations that were given so yeah I find that it, it's like you know in a way it's human nature these kind of institutions or I don't like calling them institutions but you know homes for the disabled it's set up in a way that lowers people's own accountability and you know we are only human I'm not trying to point a finger or trying to you know cause a freaking inquisition or anything like that I'm just saying like there must be ways and means for us to set up a culture or a, 
way to care for people with disabilities that keeps us accountable. I mean, like I think if there was CCTV in those places where the parents could see at any time what, what their kid was doing. I mean, most of the people in there were grown adults. My friend's son had just gone in there. He was a young adult. Um, but, you know, if just if people knew that people could see what they do there, like, I think there would be a different behaviour and different culture. Um, and it's not just, it's not about the being looked at or being watched or performance or something like that. It's just, for me, it's just accountability. You know, if you're paid to do a job, fucking do the job. You know, don't sit around and gas bag and sit on your ass or, you know, it's, there's, some, there's this culture around disabilities where, uh, you know, how we see disabled people, how we treat them, you know, like how you can become like a bit blasé as, as, a, as a staff or, I mean, I don't know, maybe the nursing staff would have uh, had a bit of um, experience in that, but I just feel like, you know, I don't want my kid to go and live in an institution, and yet I know, like, I can't, I can't cope with her on my own, like, I can't cope with her now on my own. Um, and this is another thing I wanted to get into, is the actual mental state of, as a carer, that, like, my daughter's like a perpetual toddler, you know, like, she's been like a toddler for the last 15, well, okay, so 13 years, 12, 13 years. So she's never grown out of that stage. And, you know, like, usually... Everyone knows what it's like to have a toddler. Like it's like you constantly have to watch them. You constantly, you know, have to make sure they're not endangering themselves. You know, constantly, like you know, make sure they're not going on the road. Not, you know, not going to, you know, that for like twelve years. Like my brain seriously is like it. It feels like my brain split in like split in half. It's like I've got one thing where I, you know I I just can't do anything focus on anything for longer than four or five minutes without having to turn around and see what what she's doing and um when I did get to go on retreat uh, a bit over a year ago and you know had finally had that break totally just went somewhere where I couldn't just go and keep on doing what I usually do working you know cleaning the house or I went overseas I went somewhere where like there was you know solar electricity but you know, I was just totally, had my own little space, just a bed, a mosquito net, and a little table and stuff, and a nice window, you know, I was in nature, so it was, uh, like, nurturing and healing, I guess, and, and just, you know, I just felt my, it's like, uh, you know, uh, like, psh, <laughs> like when you let a balloon go. Like, like for, you know, nearly a week it took for my brain to sort of like come back to normal because like I'm in the state at the moment, like I need, I've been needing a retreat for the last few months um, because my brain is just constantly like go, go, go watching Freya, like I've just put her in the respite house yesterday, so I'm at the start of having a break for a few days, but it's not really going to be a retreat, I don't think. <laughs> um, and it gets to this point as a carer, like when my, your brain is like that, that I I feel like I can't have con normal conversations with people. It's like my I've I've kind of gone into this emotional blank state, and. I just can't, I can't enjoy being with other people really, like, I, it's like a, 
it's an effort to try and get my brain to converse with people like um I know, I'm just fucking exhausted <laughs> but yeah so when I'd been on my retreat the last time or you know I felt like during it just that like the gradual kind of like coming back to some kind of feeling of being normal and being able to be in my own world and life and being enough for long enough <laughs> to be able to feel like safe in, I don't know if it's safe, but in having any kind of life of my own, I guess. Like to be able to have my own, you know, explore my own sort of adventures or my own interests or go, you know, go traveling somewhere, go on like adventure somewhere, sit somewhere, talk with people. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah very oh my god amazing but it shouldn't be amazing you know like I should be able to I shouldn't be pushed to this point of total exhaustion and breakdown that's why I've been several times in the last bit over a year year and a half um, and my my feeling about the whole thing is like I don't want my daughter to be someone's job you know and I've had enough I have had enough some experiences and I've just spent uh, two three four months living in Bali and only just recently like been to experience the school school program or school there where um, and you know my whole experience of being in Asia the last year and a half has been a, um, it's like when I'm there with her it just things just feel a, a hell of a lot easier because people are more feel like a sense of responsibility as a whole group like as a as a family, like, I don't feel like it's me, my individual responsibility to check on, you know, be responsible for every single thing she's doing, like, you know, there's other kids that come in and interact with her, play with her, it's all, it's like a nat natural sort of social family interaction that takes that weight off me, and it's not that I'm not responsible for her or something but it just makes it a lot easier than when I'm here and I'm totally you know in Australia and you know have this like sole responsibility for her so um yeah there's like this sense of people have a shared empathy or a uh, sense of, of uh, care for um, everyone that's sort of in their environment, so, 